السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ لیٹس بگن محمد صلی اللہ رسول الکریم اما آباد فاؤس بلائم نے شیطان رجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم سو وی کین ڈو دا چیپٹر آف صلاح اینڈ بیفور بگننگ دس واٹ پرافٹ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم سیڈ سلو کمار آئی تو مونی اسلی پرے ایز یو ہیو سین می پرینگ سو لیٹس بگن وتھ دس and today's chapter is wudu ablution so let's uh, see the chapter of wudu in wudu ablution before doing wudu if someone needs to use the restroom washroom they can use the washroom he should use the washroom and uh, do and clean yourself with the water before doing the wudu uh, siwak you know a tooth stick which is called miswak It's a good practice to clean the teeth with a tooth stick or a <clears throat> toothbrush, excuse me, before performing voodoo. In this way, you avoid many diseases which are caused by unclean teeth. And as mentioned in Hadith, Aisha radiallahu anha reported Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, the use of a tooth stick, that is miswak, is a means of purifying the mouth and is pleasing to the Allah. This is in Ahmad and Nasai. Prophet ﷺ also said, If I wouldn't have felt that it is difficult for my people, I would have ordered them to use a siwak with every salam. That is, before doing each wudu, Muslims should always try to fulfill this wish by doing the sunnah of Prophet ﷺ. And here, this is very important, you know. Niya uh, for wudu. You don't have to verbally say anything. Niya is it in the sadar. It is in the heart. So you don't have, there is no any evidence or wordings of Prophet ﷺ. But before doing the wudu, what you have to do, even <coughs> it's washroom, there is a toilet seat next to the sink, then also you are going to say Bismillah. You don't have to say Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Just Bismillah is if enough. And action for performing wudu, ablution. Wash the hands up to the wrist, making sure that no parts of the hand is left dry. Wash it thoroughly. You know how you do it slowly and using less water. And rinse the mouth, taking up water with the right hand. Taking with the right hand and putting in your mouth. And clean the nose, sniff. This is the most important thing. Sniff water up from the right palm and then eject water with the left hand. Fourth thing, wash the face from ear to ear. And here, uh, forehead to chin. Make sure that no part of the face is left dry. And the, <coughs> excuse me, the wash of forearms, right forearm first up to the elbow, making sure that no part of them is left dry. Rub the head, wet your finger and then wipe the head with your finger starting from the forehead, taking them to the, up to the uh, uh, neck and uh, you don't have to wipe the neck and then come in the forehead in the front part, okay? And cleaning your ears too. Clean the ears by inserting the tips of the index finger, wet it with the water into the ear, twist them around the folds of the ears then pass the thumb behind the ear from the bottom upwards wash the feet right from the first up to the ankles make sure that no parts of the feet left right especially between the toes and same thing for the uh, hand also between the fingers <coughs> special facilities in budu ablution rubbing the socks with wet hands instead of washing the feet is allowed so here when you are uh, doing the voodoo here what we are so here uh, we were saying regarding uh, rubbing over the socks with wet hand instead of washing the feet is allowed uh, here in this provide that socks has been put on after performing an ablution. What you have to remember? That socks, you put on the socks after ablution, including washing the feet. You did complete wudu, okay? Then you put on the 
socks then you can wipe it over the socks this is allowed for how much time 24 hours from the time of evolution and for 3 days if the person is on journey if you are local you are not going anywhere that is allowed for 24 hours but if you are on journey then it is allowed for 3 days after this time the feet must be washed similarly if there is a wound any any part of the body which has to be washed in ablution if washing that particular part is likely to cause harm remember this point it is permissible to wipe the dressing of the wound with a wet hand and this is exception okay hadith mughira bin shoba said prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam performed ablution and wiped over his socks and his sandals this is in ahmad tirmidhi and abu daud and ibn majah each detail of the ablution has been performed by Prophet ﷺ. He taught us each and every step. And he did once, twice or thrice except rubbing of the head and cleaning of the ear. And action 6 and 7 should only be done once. <clears throat> Since all the above methods, you know, we have seen the method, how it has to be 1, 2 or 3, not more than that. You shouldn't exceed that. And Amr bin Suhaib, quoting his father on authority of his grandfather, narrated that Prophet ﷺ said, If anyone performs action of ablution more than three times, he has done wrong. Except the exception, you know, you might felt, oh, some place is dry, then you are wetting that part, but not more than that, you know, that is a transgression and done wickedly. This is in Nasayin Ibn Majah. <coughs> Let's see the dua at the end of the wudu. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. This is in Muslim. I testify there is no deity except Allah alone and I testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and messenger. And there is one more dua, okay? Allahumma jalni minat tawwabina wa jalni minat mutatakhirin. And this is in Tirmizi. O oh Allah, make me among those who are penitent and make me among those who are purified. Uh, regarding Tayammum, let's cover in this chapter. Uh, in circumstances when water cannot be found or just enough is available for drinking. You know, just you can drink but you don't have enough water to do the wudu. Or it is injurious to health, you know, very cold and it's... Uh, and your situation, like if you do it, you can die in such situation, then dry ablution can be performed. So here, it's given in the Quran, this is surah number 5 and ayah number 6. If you do not find any water, then take clean earth or sand and rub it on your face and hands. Allah does not wish to put you in difficulty, but he wants to make you clean and complete his favor onto you. So you should be grateful to him. So this is permission to use sand for this purpose is allowed in the Quran. This is mentioned in the Quran. So what we learn today in this chapter, Niya is in heart. Do you have to say verbally any words? No. Niya is in heart. And before starting Buddha, what you have to do, even in the washroom, Next to the sink is a toilet seat. Then also you're going to say Bismillah. Doesn't matter. And strike palm of both ha hands on clean uh, sand, dust or anything containing this. Example, uh, you know, uh, keep a bag of sand that is clean. And even you can order it online or you can make it manually in a small bag, in a cotton bag. You can put the sand, clean earth sand and use it you know pass the palms both the hands over the face once and then rub your right and left palm and left hand with the right palm and this is in Bukhari and Muslim I hope you understand just putting the sand uh, like rubbing the sand and uh, just uh, doing it on your face and hands finished with the same dua like what I mentioned before let me uh, like uh, repeat it again Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu 
اللہ جعلنی من توابین و جعلنی من متفاہرین so we here end the chapter of wudu i just summarized it because already we did it a uh, detail in uh, prayer according to sunna you can listen that one it has all the details and this was just a review about the wudu jazakallah khairan kaseera